Hello, welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel. Hey, if you're new, welcome. Why don't you subscribe? Click that like button. If you have been with the channel for a while, thank you so much for your views, interest in the topics we talk about. We talk all about creating a novel food forest in your backyard that will attract everything you love and bring great joy into your life, as well as abundance and the ability to, I don't know, provide five eggs a day and, well, currently mangoes. This is a special pre-release evening live stream. And the next thing that's going to happen is that at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Jedi Jingle Maker will be releasing a new track, a new music video that I've created. It's called Alan Watts Dancing Meditation, and it uses some of the concept of, concepts of Alan Watts combined with some music that you might like. So if you're into music, well then the Jedi Jingle Maker is where you should be tonight at 8 p.m. You could be the 23rd subscriber to that channel where I'm releasing all my new music. And I've really enjoyed doing that. Okay, so let's look to see what is happening around the backyard tonight. Well, one of the things I'm watching very carefully are these two pigeon peas. I'm getting ready to plant many more. Pigeon pea redundancy, I think, is a good idea in this yard, even though they're pretty easy to grow. They've proven to be kind of uh, temperamental. Some areas they seem to do well, some areas they're not. Uh, one of the things I'm checking and monitoring very closely are the mango trees. And as you can see, the, the budding growth getting ready to go on that mango tree you're also going to see a little bit of budding happening on this mango tree. This is the time of the year where these are going to jump forward, and I want to be positioned to provide them with the bunny manure they will need to make a good jump. Because they, you could tell, they don't look that great, right? They've been, they've been wind whipped, and they have also been salt sprayed. Not the best situation for a mango. However, the temperature, the sunlight, all the other factors are there. They'll grow up through those two factors I just mentioned if I provide them with the right fertilizer and you can see this one's got the little buds getting ready to go as well now you know I'm a big lover of the Barbados cherry you probably are too you can see this Barbados cherry was one that I recently acquired and planted here this will surely be a huge producer for me and behind it the moringa tree tree of life what a beauty this one I took off of a cutting and just merely jammed it in a pot full of sand which that's my my yard sand I call it my soil here and um, you know if you watch the channel you know my philosophy which is just plant a lot of stuff all the time and see what works in your yard and you're gonna see in this shot here a lot of things I've just jammed in here casually like these mulberries and they have taken root that's one of the most popular videos on Eat Your Backyard is the how to grow a mulberry tree video, which actually, nostalgically, it was uh, the tree in that video has died. Since then, I actually chopped it down. Jack was very sad. But we have more than quadrupled our, our mulberry tree uh, experience in the backyard. So we, we've really gone way beyond what we had before with the mulberries, even though we removed that one that had a lot of sentimental value for us. And these are just branches off of that guy that are growing like crazy. Uh, now that we have chickens, we know that the, the chickens love the mulberries. They love the figs. This is a time of the year when we're going to be feeding them a lot of cool cherries and things that are that are dropping on the ground all the time. You can see everywhere you look, there's a cherry or two getting ready to hit the ground. and we like to come out here, Jack and I collect up the cherries, feed the chickens. They're always grateful. We can go over and say hi to the chickens as we get ready. I've got little Jack as my human alarm clock tonight. He is going to come out and give me fair warning, as the Van Halen album would tell us, to know to go in and attend the live chat on the Jedi Jingle Maker new song release tonight. Please go to Jedi Jingle Maker and subscribe. Thank you. 
appreciate it. And you will be one of just a few people that are subscribed. Look at these little sweet chickies. And I always say, this is the time of night if you have backyard chickens, whatever chickens on your farm, your place, they just get kind of mellow. They don't make a lot of noise this time of night. They get a little bit more like attention oriented where they're looking around and just slowly moving. So I've enjoyed this time of the night with the hens. They're never noisy. They're always affectionate. These little golden sex link birds that are the orange ones here, great, great egg producing bird, by the way. If you're looking to get some backyard chickens, I would recommend the golden sex links very highly. They're, almost, they're considered to be kind of a bantam bird, a little bit smaller body bird than maybe some of the other birds you might encounter, like that big fat barred rock mama back there, which we also love, the barred rock, but they are considerably larger. I've got five chickens. Five chickens will lay, lay five eggs a day reliably in this little chicken coop I built. Is that amazing or what? I could just stand here for a minute and say, I'm pretty happy that I got into the, the chicken game. If for nothing else, they make great pets. They make great food. They're a pretty low maintenance pet, I would say, when you give them a wide berth. So, you know, they have this little chicken area that's some pavers and so on, but you can see it gets covered. They just are kicking all the organic matter we put in there in all directions all the time. So they cover up those pavers pretty fast, but that actually provides a layer of bedding that even if they, you know, poop on it, it's it's fine until they just kind of sweep it out of the way anyway. It's not as dirty. It creates a cleaner environment when you give a lot of organic matter for the chickens to be on top of. And they'll naturally compost and break down everything that they encounter. As you can see them scratching around. They never get tired of doing the work. So any everything really that I just don't want to handle in some other way, like placing in the compost bin or um, you know, kind of chop and dropping into the beds. I just bring back here and throw it into the chicken pen and they go to town. And I've given them a pretty large area to live in. For five chickens, this is, you know, free range territory. This is their domain. They know where every sweet bug hole is. They know where all the, all the drama is happening. And you can see that, if you see in the shot there, there's a banana tree laying down. Uh, I, this is the end of a idea, which is where I thought bananas could grow in a chicken pen. No, bananas cannot grow in a chicken pen, I assure you. You know why? Because these sweet little hens will peck at that banana, they'll eat it. They eat it from the bottom up and then it just collapses. So this one was on that way. I just chopped it over, leaned it over, and they've been consistently eating it. All the other banana trees that I had in here have been leaned over and they ate every single bit. If you can see, there's just the fibers left over from the, the banana. So I just wanna say one more time as a plug, please go check out Eat Your, uh, sorry, uh, Jedi Jingle Maker, which the premiere is happening at 8 p.m. tonight. Kind of just giving you a tour around of what I'm thinking about right now. Getting ready to go in and be part of that. I'm really proud of this particular track which is uh, all about Alan Watts, who's one of my favorite. This is another longer cutting of a ever-bearing mulberry that I planted here. And you can see it's doing pretty well. You know, I use this technique where I just mound up oak leaves and various leaf matter that's in this corner of the yard around it. And then the hens will inevitably get out and start to kick it in all directions. I just kind of rake it back into a pile and I can see they've already kicked it away from there. Here's another good, you see this? There's a pigeon pea I just jammed in that pot and now it's getting ready to plant. That's a great thing to do, just jam pigeon peas everywhere. They say once you have pigeon peas, you will never not have pigeon peas. And I like that concept because pigeon peas are super high protein, very easy to grow, more or less a, a tree-like pea that you can eat for years. This, of course, is the Persian mulberry, which I trimmed way back and it is loving it. It got a caterpillar infestation, but it's rebounded quickly. And, oh, another update. I trimmed back Shade Management 101. I decided to just do it. I trimmed back this longing tree to allow all of these bananas to get full, as much sun as they can get, pretty much. So I'm very pleased about that. This is my Cavendish Banana Dwarf banana. Hey, slightly Stacy. Great to see you. 
Yeah, so my Cavendish Banana Grove is, uh, it was about probably a 60 or $70 investment, you know, which is just gonna be raining down bananas on me nonstop. So, good investment. Once you get the grove started and you just keep feeding it the bunny turds, they really just turn into nonstop production machines if you give them enough water. And here we're very arid and it's been very dry lately, but you know, I do have an irrigation system, but it really doesn't reach this area much. So I have to come back here with the hose, but that's been one of the things I paid a lot more attention to over the recent years, which was the application of water. It seems so basic, right? What do you need to do to grow stuff in your backyard or anywhere? You need water, sunlight, soil, and uh, you know, just paying attention to those basics. But the the water thing, it's a labor. And if you don't have the automatic irrigation set up here, where I am, in a very arid sandbar, central Florida, it's probably gonna just dry out and die. And so the plants that we have here have to be somewhat drought tolerant because they might have to suffer those moments, but I try to give at least a little bit of love on the in-betweener spots. And we're in an in-betweener spot right now, a dry patch. By the way, and I apologize for being so like, you know, crazy Eddie, buy the whatever, but, uh, I, I am so happy and like excited about my music channel that I'm hoping to share it as much. So if you go to Jedi Jingle Maker tonight, you'll see me there on the live chat. And uh, I love the song I put, I did a song actually that had, uh, well anyway, I, I'm starting to really produce music at the level I was envisioning being able to produce it as, a, as I started to build this music studio capability that I now have in place. You know, it took me a while to do that series of investments to get there. It hadn't actually been as expensive as I thought. Hey, James Tropicals, it is great to see you. I actually, I sent you a, uh, a comment tonight to see if you wanted to jump on the live stream. All right, so if you could tell me what time it is, that would help me. I do not want to miss my own live stream on the Jedi Jingle Maker channel. I think it's getting close. I have little Jack in there as the human alarm clock and I'm kind of testing to see if he's going to be able to pull it off, but he is quite reliable. Yeah, the banana, the uh, banana grove, you know, it can get out of control. Let's just be clear about that. I've got some musa. The, these are musa, so these are larger and it's nestled in with this strawberry tree. But, uh, you know, it can get very large. It got very large in the other area where the chicken coop is now. I had to totally relocate all of that in order to make it make sense. Just to kind of transfer a system. But it takes a little time before that system gets totally back online. Yeah, hey, anybody that's on the live chat, if you can just shoot in the comments what time it is, that will help me tremendously. And I do have some spaces for the, the pineapples. I need to get some more pineapples into this system to be maximum pineapple production possibility. As you can see that the Hayden mango tree here is quite large and uh, it's actually in full bloom of mangoes and I need to get the dehydrator up to 100% and start dehydrating mangoes. But you can probably see lots of them on there. Hey Jack, what time is it? All right, looks like it's 7.59. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna jump over to the Jedi Jingle Maker Experience. I'll see you there. I'd love to see what you think about these new goofy songs I am making. Love you, mean it. See you there. <laughs>